here's a little view of the lake. Don't mind my dirty windshield. Some reeds poking up there. It's definitely a spot I frequent. What's up everyone? It's the casual caster here. I'm out uh, 6 a.m., a few minutes shy of 6 a.m. actually, uh, out here in the Northern California, Sacramento area, uh, specifically Rancho Marietta, uh, and we're about to do some bass fishing. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get on the fish and uh, improve on our catch the other day. All right, let's hit the water. All right, guys, so the way I fish this lake typically is I start at one end uh, of a side, so to speak, leave my vehicle over there, and I go ahead and I'll walk down all the way to that other peak uh, right around the corner there and back to the vehicle um, with uh, different types of casts, and then I'll drive over to the other side of the lake and do just about the same thing that way we cover a lot of water and find these fish so well at least that's the that's the plan right god knows what really happens every time so maybe i'm the fish god maybe i know what happens every time if that's the case i'd already have two million subscribers and you know it'd be a different story i'd be out in a boat And hey, I'd love to get a boat one day, guys. So get me to 2 million subscribers and let me buy a casual casting boat. And we'll get out there. We'll go cover a lot of water, right? All right. Let's see what we have over this way. It's a little hotter guys, it's uh, 93 degrees, it's 5.30, it's going to get cooler as we go. So we'll start some deeper water here and work our way shallow. Stand up. Alright, see I'm carrying four poles with me, we've got four different types of lures pre-rigged up. Two, uh, three of them are mystery tackle box lures. Um, the other ones aren't. So let's see. Set that. Uh, I got a Neko worm here. Com uh, combo with Daiwa and uh, Gary. Yeah, there's some brush over there. Jig looks like it'd be good too. Oh shit. It's a great start to the day guys. First cast. Cast your worm right off. Oh no, maybe not. I thought I did. Yeah, I cast the tail of it right off. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. He caught that one on the fall, guys. This uh, 
kind of lava color Senko is really hitting. I was trying to get them top water, but they just weren't having it top water this morning. Come on, bud. Stay with me there. I'll get you out of there. All right. Here we go. First one of the day. Not too big. You go ahead. And you're gone. All right. All right, let's put that right back in the water here. We caught that one right out over that way. Let's see who's hanging out a little deeper. Fix that so we can get a further cast here. See what we can do. I was just letting up my line last time and he caught it on the fall, which is always fun. I bet you we can go two for two on cast with this one. Texas rig senkos just always do the trick. Sometimes they eat it on the fall. Sometimes you just kind of have to dead stick it. Just little tiny twitches. And they pick it up off the bottom. Reel in your slack, give it a couple more jumps, sometimes caught on something, hop it over it, give it a bigger jump, right? There we go, it's free now. Let it settle back down. There we go, he's playing with it. Oh, no. Let me just make sure I've got some leaves on that. Morning. All right, if we don't get this one to stay in place, we're going to have to re rig that guy. Sometimes all you have to do is just take out the last little bit, last little quarter inch off the top. That puts the hook in a new place. That puts, gets the little ripped part off gone too. You can get a little more life off your Senko. The only thing is you can only do that a couple times because then you take a five inch Senko and you turn it into a three inch or maybe not a little more than three inch which isn't too attractive on a texas rig that's more like a ned rig at that point which isn't something else you do with your senkos if you're not trying to just throw them away um, some people melt them down and re-pour them others will go ahead and turn them into ned rig or other finesse baits I'm not giving up on top water, guys. I'm just making sure there's some content here. 
a couple a couple strikes or a couple strikes. Oh, no, that's a weed. There isn't only one motion to do. Sometimes it's a, it's a couple small pops. Let it sit. Sometimes you get a big rise and fall. Get it to jump and fall a little bit more. Then you dead stick it for a little bit. Sometimes you pop, pop. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Just kind of hop it along the bottom a little bit. Sometimes they'll bite it as it's hopping. I'll give it another couple hops here. And now we could dead stick it. Let it hit the bottom again. And sometimes what you'll find is the fish just go ahead and get keen. They just saw their buddy get ripped out of the water. All that activity in the early morning, they're not necessarily going to hit that same spot, which is why you like to fan out. My first cast is a little closer to the shoreline, so now I went deeper, seeing if I can't get a bigger fish to go ahead and want to chase that. Don't be discouraged if you feel it dragging on the bottom or if it gets snagged real quick and you get it off because a lot of times that's that reaction bite the fish are looking for. So I'm backpack fishing today. Uh, I'll take show you that in a second, but I've got my uh, my backpack that straps two poles on the side, and I'll hold two in the hand. That way I can go ahead and spot the spot. I was out here at this lake uh, the other day, and I went spot hump uh, hopping. I actually walked across the whole lake uh, across. No, I don't walk on water. Not that good yet, but I mean I walked the perimeter of the whole lake. And I got uh, probably eight different stops, and I caught fish at six of them. So, I don't have that time this morning. I actually have a paintball practice. I do a competitive paintball. Um, it's actually my Sunday hobby. But uh, practice starts at 9.30. Why not wake up and fish until 9? That's what I say. All right, this worm has had it. Let's go ahead and re-rig them real quick. And we're going to try, throw the worm out one more time out in the middle. Maybe two more times in the middle. Then we're going to go back to top water. Oh, I got a guy swimming right over there. I'll show you guys in a second. I don't want to spook him. Oh, no, he's gone. Okay. He heard me talking about him. He was camera shy. I said I was going to bring... Bring the camera over, and Mr. Bass or Mrs. Bass, I'm not sure which, said, Nope, I didn't have my makeup on yet, or morning coffee, or bluegill, or whatever, whatever the bass needs to get going in the morning. You know, I mean, I haven't tried this yet, guys, but there's coffee scented baits. I can't imagine what, what about that would excite a fish, but, uh, Maybe that's what they need in the morning. Maybe the, uh, the fish need a little Folgers. So. 
the best part about waking up. But anyway, repair that Senko. Now it's got a nice strong hold. Deep cast out in the middle. Cut still a little chilly. It's just 7 a.m. It's in the low 50s, hence the sweater in California. Not really the angle. I was shooting a little wider than that, guys. That's why I'm called the casual caster, and that's my tried and true name right there. I was aiming for about, I don't know, 30 to 45 degrees out, and I put it right on the shoreline. It's not to say this isn't going to work right on the shoreline here. This time of the morning, there's people, there's people, wow, bass are people too. Now there's bass right up on the shoreline. So, but I'm not going to spend my time dead stick in this one. I'm going to try to get, if he's going to get it, he's going to get it because he's hungry as I'm hopping it because I don't love where it's at. Okay. Nope, let's put this where I wanted to put it. Real quick, uh, a little better. That is the exact same spot right there that I caught that little guy 10 minutes ago. Let that guy come back to his bed. Oh, come on. Oh, you got off. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, you... Oh. In the weeds. Got off in the weeds. Broke off my Senko. Whew. At least not Senko, but Gary Yamoto. At least we know he's right there. All right. Uh, all right, so let's chalk that up to I should have known better. Spent a good half an hour at least fishing a spot in the hottest part of the day before it starts to cool down. Um, fishing this spot without shade. Like, I want to be in shade. The fish want to be in shade. Duh. So, uh, I'll use this opportunity to show you guys my uh, my backpack here. I can go ahead and put two rods in it because like I said before, I like to carry four rods. Give it a little snap to make sure they don't swing around and hook me in the ear or shoulder or wherever it would be in the blast zone, swing zone. I've got all my baits inside there. Let me put the soft plastic back in. <clears throat> and tackle boxes and scales and extra line and just about it's a small store in there actually all right that goes back on and we move out to an area with some shade don't get caught up in those get out of the sticks 
Okay, maybe not a super nice one, but it's a fish. Fish number two. Let's get you off that hook, bud. I know, I know you don't want to be in there. Let's get you out of here. Let's get a picture. And I'll get you on your way. Oh, you ate my worm. Or it's gone. That's okay. I went for a good cause. Alright, fish number two. And it's about the same size. Another dink. But right now it's just about the fight and finding them. Alright buddy, thank you so much. That's off the uh, Senko. And he's gone. Uh, I gotta stop uh, turning the camera off and, and on. I, I thought that camera was on and I turned it on for the for the retrieval there but not for the catch. So we'll turn this on for the next one. Throw him out one more time. Back kind of where I got the bite before. Guys, if you don't have a pair of polarized fishing glasses, I sincerely recommend you get them because even in low light conditions like this, I can see a couple of extra feet. There we go. Stay on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tighten that drag up a little bit. Fish on. All right, bud. All right. Oh, fish off in the weeds. Well, thank you for getting all the way up there for me. Come on. All right. That's off of the 10,000 Lakes Craw. Oh, come on, bud. Come on, bud. You don't want to go in there. Open that mouth. That's my fault. Let me get a quick picture with you just for... All right. Thank you, bud. Away you go. And he's gone. Well, first cast, spot three. Here we go. little dink but at least we didn't skunk all right fish number one for the day spot number three first cast Cinco black and salmon little dink goodbye bud and he's gone there he goes off that way all right
path, I think. There you go. Fish on. I just taught him how to use a bait caster. It took him about five casts, and there he goes. Got a fish. He felt that thump thump, right? Not just the regular. Yeah. Yeah. Now world class, but. Nope, I tell you what, that's bigger than the two dink sats. It's about the same size as the two dinks I yeah. caught today. So we call a little one the dink. So because you didn't set it so fast, it's a little deeper in there. In there. Yeah. But it's not like deep, deep. They can go for like five minutes out of water. It's crazy. Won't hold it. No, that's all right. All right, there you go. Not mine, my father's, but there you go. And off he went. Now would it to So pull that worm right back down. Remember, it's just a, it's a, it's a fake worm, so. Yeah. So, watch the hook as you do it, right? Yeah. This is what's called the Texas rig, and mine's called the wacky rig. Mm -hmm. The worms here really like the fish here love the Texas rig. But, so why I gave that to you? Because I figured it'd catch it. <laughs> so, what do you think? It was like a pound, that fish? That was probably right about a pound. I got to scale the next time you catch one. We, we, if, yeah. if it's a little bigger, we'll cut, we'll, we'll put it on there. But, so now it's back through. You see how I put the, the head back through there? Yeah. So you could leave it like that if we had no weeds at the bottom. But what we do here is just bury in a little bit. So it doesn't catch on it. Yeah, right? I got it. So if you start to snag and you see weeds up there, mm -hmm. just, just kind of put it back, back to where it was. Yeah. And now this, sometimes, because this is a braid line right here, yep. and that's a fluorocarbon line, we tie them together. So sometimes that weight gets caught on that, right? Yeah. So you just make sure that weight's sitting right about there. Huh. And you're good to throw it right back in. Awesome, man. Sometimes you lose the worm on, on the fish. Sometimes you catch four fish on one worm. Wow. But. That's cool. There you go. Yeah, yep. But early on, you can see how you, people get tricked with snags. Oh, yeah. So again, if that second thump, instead of just reeling, if you would have given it a nice, a nice firm hook set, right? You would have, uh, that's a good spot right there. Um, you would have hooked him the lip instead of deeper in the mouth. Ugh. <sighs>